in this lecture we will derive the shear formula now we have already seen one very important thing that is if you take a beam and you are computing the stresses at the interface right at any particular cross section in the beam what we have seen that the shear stresses arise on the interface that is fine because your applied load is acting at the interface but at the same time this transfer shear stress also gives rise to a longitudinal shear stress at every single cross section that you have at every single point if you traverse across this section at every single point whatever is the tau going down you have a complementary shear stress which is acting along the longitudinal axis now to derive the shear formula which essentially gives you a relationship between the tau the shear stress and the applied shear v we are going to cheat we are not going to consider the shear stress which is acting on you know this particular cross section over here but the complementary shear which acts along here so let's go ahead and see how to derive the shear formula that is there okay. so what you see here let's just go through the figure first the different components of the figure before we start writing down the different equations and coming up with the shear formula that is there now what you see in the screen is that you have this particular beam that is there right? so this beam is under you know a varied set of loading you have a udl you have some point loads you have some point moments and so on now as a result of these loads that you see over here i have taken a small cross section so let's say that this is you know a particular cross section that you, this is a cross section of interest which you're looking at which is you know shown somewhat over here so this cross section over here is subjected to a variety of forces as you can see that this is your neutral axis where you have so this cross section undergoes bending and as a result of which you will have this is your neutral axis say right and on one side remember when we took that small you know beam element we had m on one side m plus dm on the other side v on one side v plus dv on the other side well you don't see the v over here because you will see when we write the equilibrium equations we are primarily considering fx equals to zero the v and the small w that is the udl that you see in this over here it acts vertically down so that is ignored in this case because we are primarily interested in the x direction forces now let's take a look at the forces now this one see on any on any particular side this this due to this moment m you have these stresses which are acting which is sigma equals to m y by i and here also your sigma if you call the sigma prime on this face it is you know m plus dm times y divided by i now this this gives rise to say compressive part at the top zero stresses at the neutral axis tensile at the bottom over here so you have uh, if, if you just look at one of these faces so if you have you have this triangular force distribution over here now now this triangular force distribution it can be converted to an equivalent force over here right it is just you know how you uh, make equivalence of you know uniformly distributed or triangular loads and so on it's exactly similar so you have this triangular you know force distribution for which maybe this is the equivalent uh, you know, force that you have over here and as you can see since it triangle it acts at a you know, two-third from here but that that's irrelevant in this in this context so and similarly have for the compressive part both as the left side as well as the right side over here okay so this is the overall element equilibrium because remember the element is neither you know you know uh, traversing to the left or to the right it is you know somewhere still within the beam so the forces must be in equilibrium right what you see here in this figure so maybe i will mark this figure as number one and say this is my number two number two the figure number two is nothing but the cross section of this one over here so remember that these derivations both what we did for the bending and what we are going to do for the shear it is not just valid for rectangular cross section it is valid for any general cross section as long as your section is prismatic or your beam is prismatic that is the section is same throughout the entire length of the beam right so now this is the cross section so this is how the cross section of the beam looks like you know sort of an oval shaped egg kind of a thing if you if you want to uh, consider now so this one has this length dx dx over here so this is the uh, cross section now within this cross section to, to write the equilibrium equations i am looking at a small element so anything above so i have taken a section of this smaller chunk which i have separated of the beam so let's say this is the this is the section i am looking at right so anything over so i am going to consider i'm taking a small chunk which is this top 
above this red rectangle which i just drew this top chunk over here for that i am going to write the equilibrium equation now before writing the equilibrium equations or seeing the forces let's see the different parts of this figure so as we already deciphered this is a length dx over here now where i have taken this section this line it has a distance of y prime from you know the neutral axis this particular this top chunk that is there that has an area a prime and the centroid of that area is at a distance of y bar prime from the neutral axis and all of these parameters will come into play and that's why we are essentially looking at it right so this is the section plane so it is written the section plane so above the section plane the area is a prime and the distance is y bar prime over here okay now if i take this section over here right and i am just you know deriving the equilibrium for this section remember this section is also in equilibrium the whole beam is in equilibrium this small chunk we separated dx is in equilibrium within that small chunk each of the smaller chunks also in equilibrium and equation equ equations of equilibrium is valid anywhere whether the smaller chunks the bigger chunk or the entire beam so i am going to separate out this top small chunk over here that is the part element that i am calling the part element which you see over here in this figure so this is say maybe my figure three right so this is the part element that you're looking at and i'm looking at the equilibrium for that and this is shown in 3d over here from you know directly taken from here okay now once you take this guy over here let's see what are the forces or the stresses which are acting so on this left hand face which is this face over here let's say the stress is sigma right the sigma remember is you know uh, m by divided by i if the moment is m and here on this particular side you have the moment m plus dm so the stresses will be different than here on the left side so this one is known as the sigma prime over here right okay are these the only stresses which are there probably not because you see these two are different this sigma and the sigma prime are different the area of the cross the area of this part element say is same in both the sides because it's prismatic so it's a prime here as well as a prime over here so what is this additional force which is you know balancing which is keeping this part element in equilibrium well remember don't forget that across this phase you had the v which was that transverse you know which was that transverse shear which was acting and in addition to that you also have this complementary you know tau over here so for this tau over here i i, I should not say v i should say tau for this tau you have a complementary tau which is acting over here so as you can see at the bottom face of this element over here you have this stress which is tau which is acting over here okay so we have sigma sigma prime and the tau and all of these are kind of working together to keep your overall element in equilibrium right okay so this is the 3d figure if you look at the 2d just to make it simple that so this is the 2d representation of this this is the tau this is more clear in this figure over here this is tau which is acting at the base over here and this is the element length is again dx so let's just you know, mark that over here so this is again dx right and then on the left you have your sigma and on the right you have your uh, sigma prime that is there right okay so now either and let, let's call this you know figure number four so either from three from figure three or figure four if you start to write the equilibrium equation what do we get so let's maybe look at this figure over here or while acknowledging there's a tau which is acting at that section phase so if i have to write the equation of you know equilibrium that my uh, summation of f x equals to zero right? for this part element i am just writing the equilibrium equation that is there right so first let me write out the equation and then i will explain the different terms essentially i am doing a balance of the forces that is there so what we have over here is that so the equilibrium equation tells you that here in this particular particular uh, equation that we have this one is the force which is acting on the left face on this left face over the entirety of the left face that you see that is sigma is the stress i'm multiplying with a small element you know da prime that is there and integrating over the entire area a prime right so this is this force so i have considered this direction as positive so let's say this is my uh, you know positive x over here or in this case this is positive x right so 
tau is also acting along the same direction and what is the force due to tau remember this tau is acting over this dx and this thickness that you see the thickness of this of the of this particular element is this t over here so how to get force from stress it is for it is stress times the area so the area of this section plane is t times this dx so tau times t dx minus of this part of the of the force which is acting on the right hand face so that is integral uh, of you know sigma prime da prime a prime with a negative sign so this whole thing is in equilibrium so it must equate to zero over here now what we just discussed or what have you learned in pure bending that this sigma is nothing but your my divided by i for this left hand face and for this right hand face the sigma prime corresponds to m plus dm so it is going to be equal to m plus dm times y divided by i so you see that you know before we start writing this down that this is where you start to have the interconnections between the moment and the shear. We are, we, are, we are exploiting the things we have learned for the moment to get the shear, right? And one very important thing is that this shear actually exists only because the moment at the two faces are different. Remember when we talked about pure bending, remember that pure bending where both the faces were M and M. What was pure bending? The case where shear is zero. So if you have m and m both the same that is if this m over here and the and here also instead of m plus dm is just m your tau essentially vanishes right so for pure bending you did not have shear but when you have these bending stresses or the bending moments different at the either faces then you are then only you are going to have shear so this shear what you see is actually induced by the moment that you have in your structure so let's go ahead and express the sigmas in terms of your m by m y by i and then see where this leads to so let me write the next step of the equation So what I have done here, I have simply expanded the, the sigmas in terms of you know m over here and sigma prime as m plus dm. So now let's pull things out of the bracket, cancel a few things and see how far it further simplifies. So this is the next simplified step which we just wrote over here as you can see here this term and this term are similar so they can cancel out and once we cancel out what we get is so we get to this step over here where tau times t dx is equals to this one over here let's go ahead and rearrange a little bit more So tau becomes something like this over here that is dm dx times 1 divided by i which is the area moment of inertia of the whole section remember it is of the whole section because we have written sigma equals m y by i and when we had derived this for pure bending this i was for that entire section over there times t that is the thickness of you know this of, the, of this beam section at that point over here right integral of a, a integral over the entire area of a prime times y times da prime that is there now what do we know by da dm over dx remember go back to your roots where you derive the shear force diagrams and the bending moment diagrams the derivative of the moment is equals to the shear so you see this, that is where the shear v comes into play remember dm over dx equals to v so let's just go ahead and write that as well So tau becomes equals to V that is the shear force at that particular section divided by I times T integral of this one over here. Now this particular thing that you see in, in within the integral over here if I represent this by something else and I am going to call that as Q so equals to Q where Q let me just rewrite that where q is integral over a prime y da prime then this equation 
further simplifies to tau equals to vq divided by it let's circle that let's put a important rectangle over that right so tau equals to vq divided by it and this my friends is the shear formula right? now a couple of things let's now dissect this equation and see what all we have so tau equals to vq divided by it where v is the applied shear force that we have right so that is clear let's go to the denominator i is the area moment of inertia of the entire section this is important for the entire section t is the thickness of the beams it's a prismatic beam and may not be rectangular it may be this shape or, or some other shape so t is wherever you are calculating the tau see here this tau remember we're calculating here and why are we calculating the tau here because remember at that particular point this tau is actually the tau which is going to happen over here because of complementary remember so here this tau that you see over here is going to be actually it is going to be equal to and i'm just going to draw it with a small line will be equal to this tau that you will have at that particular interface because of complementary we'll come to that in a minute right so so uh, i and and then we have the t the which is the thickness of you know this one over here okay the last bit which is remaining in this equation is this q q now q is an important terminology and it, it is it is essential to understand this because it will you know it can make your life quite easy depending upon how you want to calculate that so q is integral over of y times da prime that you have over here so that that is that what what that means is that it is the area moment so this is the area moment about the neutral axis that you have over here so this q can also be represented as the area of this chunk times the distance of the centroid for this chunk which was y bar prime to the neutral axis that you have over here so this q i can further simplify and write it as equals to y bar prime times a prime right so it is the area it is the it is the it is the product of the area above the section you are looking at times the centroid of that area from the distance of the centroid of that area from the neutral axis now a very interesting observation you, you see is that for for this section and when we had derived pure bending remember that how did we prove that the neutral axis coincides with the centroid how we proved that 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 we had you know that particular thing was that your integral of y da was equals to zero for the entire section this is how we proved that your you know neutral axis coincides with the centroid now look at this formula for the q over here for this one what i am saying is that it is the you know moment of this area about this particular neutral axis over here now since the the moment of this you know entire area about the neutral axis is equals to zero and that led to the neutral axis being at the centroid to calculate q you can either consider the upper half or the bottom part over here because both of it has to add up and give it to zero because if for the entire cross section this must be equals to zero over here so q to calculate q in this one what i did i took this area times the distance from here to here instead of doing that what i also could have done i could have taken this bottom chunk over here this bottom chunk now instead of this top chunk i could have taken this bottom chunk calculated the area of that one times the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of the area of the bottom chunk so either either you either you take this upper chunk over here or bot, or the bottom chunk you cannot take both because if you take both then eventually you know that because the neutral axis passes through the centroid it is going to be zero a few examples will make this concept slightly more clear right so overall i hope you understood what is the shear formula now let's see through some you know easy to easy to observe uh, sections that how to calculate these different things which are there
So before going into the different sections, as I said, let me bring you back and reiterate the shear formula. So this is what we looked at that tau equals to vq by it and this page essentially has all the necessary information this will be in your uploaded slide as well so you might you know want to take a look later so here you see what we did we sort of cheated that because of the we had the shear force v so this is the v which is the force which is acting at that particular cross section and we calculated this tau as vq divided by it but to compute that we did not use this tau we used the complementary tau so this is the tau which we are going to calculate but what we used was this tau over here right which because of complementarity it exists and it is equal to this particular tau that is there so tau equals to vq by it and remember that again a few things is i is for the entire section very important it is not for just the small chunk that you are looking at i is for the entire section t is this you know width or the, the thickness of this section that you have the width of the cross section that you see at that particular point where you are calculating the tau over here and lastly the important thing which we discussed that this parameter q you see it is described here as well that it is y bar prime times a prime that is the y bar prime time a prime where this is what i was saying a is the area of the top or bottom because your in integral of yda for the entire section is zero so it must be equal and opposite what you get of course with a modular sign that you can tell that uh, that it is the area of the top or bottom portion of the members cross section above or below the section plane where the t is measured so if this is your section plane it is either the area of the top you take this a prime times y bar prime or you consider this area at the bottom and the distance from the neutral axis to the y bar prime of the area which is at the bottom over here now let's go ahead and look at some of the sections and you know how to calculate these things essentially so these are essentially some of the examples again for calculating the q because the q is important in some cases and there will be some problems in which taking the bottom part is easier than the top part so okay so here you see in this case so this is the say the neutral axis of a beam over here right and you are suppose you are calculating the shear at the point p right so this is the point p that you see so for to calculate q over here how will we calculate so this is above the point p means you are calculating this area of cross section that you see so let's just let me go ahead and maybe mark that so this is the area of cross section which is your you know a prime over here and the distance of the centroid from the neutral axis y bar prime which gives you you know this formula over here similarly here this is your point p and in this case this is your area of cross section and this is the distance to the uh, to the neutral axis of the centroid for this one and the last one see this is the last this the, in this one it may be easier to calculate you know the q from below although it is not shown here here if you are calculating the stress at this point p now uh, here the stress here and the stressor will be same because it's a symmetry it, is, it has a you know centroidal axis of symmetry over here but anyway regardless so to calculate the q of here you can you know separate this into two chunks this is essentially how you calculate centroids of section and so on so you can consider uh, this area that is your a2 and because of a2 the distance of this one is you know y2 bar prime and you have two smaller areas over here so you essentially are taking the whole area above this line of you know this line which is parallel to the neutral axis that you have over here so you are taking these two areas as well so that is your uh, it is not marked over here so this area is your you know a1 prime times your this distance and twice because you have two chunks over here one on the left and one on the right now this is also an example where instead of going above the neutral axis and considering this area to calculate q you could have considered this and this as well so essentially you could have considered your point p in this case lies exactly on the neutral axis so you could have considered this one as well right similarly for here for this one instead of taking this area and here uh, sorry before moving on to this one here it will be easier to calculate well marginally easier because you just have two identical rectangles over here see here also instead of if this is your point p instead of taking this area over here i could have very well taken this area times you know whatever say the centroid of this area is over here let me mark that right and i would have just have to take you know this distance over here for the distance to the centroid of you know that particular chunk of the area that is there 
so i hope that you know this is you know overall clear that that this is the most important thing the shear formula that tau equals to vq divided by it take a notebook write it down five times and you will understand what i'm talking about and once we have this let's go ahead and solve some problems on we'll look at one very simple example and another a slightly you know involved where you have to make use of a shear force diagram remember that similar to remember for bending when we did your sigma was maximum where where, where it was maximum in the beam it was in, within a section it is always maximum at the top or at the bottom but within a beam it is maximum at the point where it, where, it, where the sh bending moment is maximum similarly tau is maximum at the point where your v is maximum so essentially you have to find the um the, uh, the the place within the beam from your shear force diagram where the v is maximum typically is occurs where typically at the sections remember uh, typically at the supports i mean not the sections that where uh, your shear forces is pointy shear forces at the supports at the roller or the pins are, are the maximum over here so let's go ahead and look at a few examples of, 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 of first of a simple section of how to calculate the tau for a simple section given the v and and then of a beam where you have to calculate where the maximum v occurs and then calculate the top.